During this section, I will go over the electrocardiographic changes associated with atrial abnormalities. This includes left atrial abnormality, right atrial abnormality, and biatrial abnormality. This has, and often still is, referred to as hypertrophy or enlargement, but in fact, these electrocardiographic changes have not been able to be correlated with atrial hypertrophy or enlargement on autopsy studies. These are electrical changes and hence are called abnormalities. In this set of electrocardiograms, we will be looking at left atrial abnormality. To determine left atrial abnormality, we simply look in two leads, V1 or lead 2. In V1, as in this electrocardiogram, the P wave may be greater than one little box deep and one little box wide. In lead 2, as in this other electrocardiogram, the P wave may be greater than 0.12 seconds wide, or three little boxes, and is usually notched. This may also be seen in lead AVF and lead 3. This pattern in the past was referred to as P mitrali. It is not necessary to have both criteria present for the ECG to be read as left atrial abnormality. Anatomically, left atrial abnormality is easy to visualize. Since conduction begins in the sinoatrial node, depolarization begins in the right atrium and gives a P wave as seen in leads 2, AVF, and sometimes lead 3. This is followed by a dominant left atrial depolarization, which is forced to the left and downward. If I draw these separately, you can see two distinct P waves. When these are superimposed, the inferior leads have the appearance of a notch and the P wave appears widened. If we view this from lead V1, which is anterior to the heart, we typically see an upright deflection first as the right atrial impulse goes towards the electrode, followed by a second downward deflection as the impulse now goes through the left atrium in a direction away from and to the left of the electrode. Now let's look at the electrocardiographic changes of right atrial abnormality. To determine right atrial abnormality, we look in the inferior leads, 2, 3, and AVF, or leads V1 and V2. In the inferior leads, the P waves will be tall and peaked like the top of a rocket ship. By criteria, it is 2.5 millimeters or 2.5 boxes tall and 2 millimeters or 2 boxes wide. This was previously referred to as P pulmonale. In V1 or V2, the positive deflection of the P wave is greater than 1.5 millimeters or 1.5 boxes tall and is usually peaked. Anatomically, right atrial abnormality is also easy to visualize. In this case, the atrial forces are more dominant toward the right and downward. Hence, an electrode placed in front of the heart, such as V1, will see a strong deflection coming toward it before seeing a deflection going away and to the left. As such, V1 gives a tall, upright, peaked P wave, followed by a small, inverted P wave. Similarly, leads 2 and AVF, and sometimes lead 3, see a strong atrial deflection coming toward them. Biatrial abnormality is simply both criteria for left atrial abnormality and the criteria for right atrial abnormality on the same electrocardiogram. In this ECG, we can see an inverted P wave in lead V1 that is more than one box deep and one box wide, suggesting left atrial abnormality and the P wave in lead 2 is 2.5 two boxes tall, 2 boxes wide, and is peaked, suggesting right atrial abnormality. This concludes this section on electrocardiographic changes associated with atrial abnormalities. This is just one of 39 videos presented by EEE, Executive Electrocardiogram Education, your complete guide to ECG interpretation. To create an account and view other sample videos, just click on our link or visit us at ecgedu.com.
Thank you.